Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for you today. Uh, this one, uh, sorry for the delay on this one. It, it was more, I didn't want to end up kind of spamming everyone with the with test server videos. I tried to spread them out like one a day or, or one every couple of days or a few days. Uh, I didn't want to upload seven videos all at once. Uh, but I understand uh, this raid video should have been up before. But at the same time, like I mentioned in my other videos, it's really hard to find test groups. Um, though, like, I haven't run the Elite Raids yet, which is... Uh, Concerning. I don't think really anyone has because you don't really know the caliber of players you're going to find on test. Uh, it could just be guys just logging on test for fun to check stuff out. Uh, they're not like serious players testing complete content. So uh, a little bit concerning that I don't think anyone's even attempted properly the Elite Reds yet. Uh, and the DLC comes out in four days. Um, but uh, this is the Atlantis Throne Raid. Uh, this is the, the second of the two raids. Uh, basically, the first part is uh, the swimming. Um, this is the one where you fight um, Sea Beast and Column Wrath again. Um, I'm assuming this was supposed to be like the harder of the two raids, as this kind of includes the, the story, I guess you could say, of the DLC. Um, uh, that's the same, same thing as before. Uh, if you skip to the final boss and second boss parts, I'll talk about those uh, fights specifically, um, rather than talking for the full half an hour of a video um general thoughts on the raid first it's the same thing as the crown of thorns it's a little bit underwhelming of a raid uh in terms of mechanics like yes there's the sea beast fight is it's going to be interesting especially in the league because there's um not so much mechanics to it but uh more positioning stuff like that things you can kill you can die from um some stuff going on in the fight but at the same time Really, the only people that die are the people that just like have no idea and not paying attention at all. It's not like it's a difficult concept to ignore, like uh, not so much charge but slam. Everything else is damage. It's really not that difficult. As a DPS, uh, I I've never died on this fight. And this was like an entire group wipe uh, where other DPS have seen plenty of die and multiple people go down at once. It's really not that hard to position yourself to avoid this stuff, but apparently some people have the, that issue. Um, but yeah, other than that, there's, there's not, like, too many layers to the fight. Like, at least with Hive and Machine, there's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff going on in the Deathstroke fight, in terms of mechanics. Uh, terror stuff, you had, like, in the Terror fight, you had to worry about getting the, like, closing all the Vulcan nose, and her skull attacks, and when to block, and the different phases. Like, there's a lot of layers to the raids, where, uh, and, and certainly the Machine, too, with the Hive Master having all the different bosses, um... And then this raid and Crown of Thorns, there's not much layers to the raid at all. Like, you, t you tank and spank the hallways, the first boss, uh, you just tank and spank him really. Like, there's nothing you can do as the tank besides, as, as you'll see, like, just position myself so it kind of helps the group. Like, there's, there's nothing else I can do as a tank. Obviously, you can't be countered. Really. And then the Column Wrath fight, it's similar to the Crown of Thorns where everything just kind of gets thrown at you. Um, so the only difficulty comes from the fact that there's a boss and there's like, you know, multiple, multiple ad sets. Uh, and it's just, it's a really long fight unnecessarily because of how they have it with his uh, damage uh, defense buff. You'll see it in the, in the fight here, but I think, I think the actual raid we got to like was 15 minutes. And then as you can see, the video length is almost half an hour. So the final boss fight itself took like 15, it's a 15 minute fight. Um, yeah, there'll be ways to make it a bit easier once DPS focusing on the right thing and stuff like that. But it, it's made a longer fight artificially rather than being a long fight because it's hard. So we'll, we'll, um, I'll end it here. I'll leave comments in the description, uh, links to the, the first boss and to the last boss as well. Uh, the first boss is actually coming up here. So you'll, you'll see me uh, pick it up here in a sec. As the one true king of Atlantis, I demand you face me in combat for the throne. <laughs> you are not worthy. You see, Wrath, you may be king, but it is my destiny to kill the Aquaman. <laughs> Ha 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 ha! 
Arthur Curry. You must feel like someone stepped on your grave. Can you believe I was actually concerned that the news of your death might be true? That King Corbrath may have succeeded where I could not. That Poseidon, Triton, or the Boogeyman himself may have dared to deny me your dying moments. But you see, Arthur, you cannot escape your destiny. And yours is to die here, in this filthy dungeon below the very throne you once ruled from. Ah, how poetic that would be if this was a prison and not a feeding chamber. No! No! Okay, so we pick it up here on the, the first boss, which is going to be the Sea Beast. Now, uh, with this boss, uh, it, it's it's still an interesting fight. Like, uh, like when I say the raid is underwhelming, that's um, from a difficulty standpoint uh, only. Uh, you know me, like I'm, I'm content difficulty. Uh, not so much like raid design or, or the story or the animations. Like, it, it's a really beautiful raid and, and like nice cutscenes and, and cool stuff going on. Uh, but it, it's underwhelming solely from a difficulty aspect. Now, uh, that's just to say regular in case. Like, like uh, it's still possible to wipe and, and hive and, and uh, machine regular as easy as it is. Uh, there's still points where you can die. And I think you could still possibly wipe and reg in these raids uh, too. Well, actually more so Crown of Thorns just with that final boss with all the ads. Uh, I don't really see groups wiping that much here at all. Uh, I just don't think it's possible. But at the same time, I, I see the potential uh, for difficulty in Elite in these instances, especially in this fight, because you can see the platform is really small. CBs has a lot of AoEs and slam and stuff like that. So with most likely them being very high, high in damage uh, in Elite, uh, I'm assuming this fight could get difficult. Like you just saw there, two people die from his uh, AoE wave, whatever it's called. Um, really, <laughs> it's not... Uh, and then his uh, wave will leave spit on the ground, which would be like a dot damage over time, so it's a little bit hard to get the res you need a shield for. Um, so that that's like the difficulty that presents itself here, is that if someone goes down, you really need a shield to get the res. But other than that, like it, it's it's really not hard to see these attacks coming, and it's really not hard to position yourself. Like I never had a problem surviving through any of the times I DPS this. Um, and I'm showing tank footage because you don't really see me tank as often on this channel anymore, so I'm trying to get you guys footage of doing other roles. Um, like I'm going through my dealer guides now. I did all the you always see me control a DPS, so it's and I don't have as much tank footage on the channel, so that's why I'm tanking as server raids. Um, but yeah, in terms of the fight itself, all you're doing is kind of like staying along the edges as I am as a tank, just facing him completely away from the group. Um, like he's still going to face a group when he does his AOE attacks, but besides that. Uh, I'm just trying to position himself so he's the, the group. Um, most of his like frontal attacks and stuff like that are facing me only, so the group is all out of danger. Uh, and then the nice thing about positioning himself here is that when he turns to the group, it's a huge telegraph that that's going to be a group attack because he's not looking at me on the side anymore. So as soon as he starts to turn his head towards the group, everyone should know, okay, there's an attack coming that's going to be directed towards the group. I should block or roll out of the way or, or stuff like that. So it's it really, no one should be dying at all. This is not a complicated concept. Uh, I should mention as well, you want to keep a cleanse uh, on cooldown a lot for his fight because, as you saw, he's going to suck in like the group and then uh, start to like get swallow somebody at some point. Or once they get close, he's going to put like a acid kind of uh, aura on you guys. Uh, that'll be a damage over time and hit players near you. So. I always want to keep try to keep a cleanse for that, and then if I was a DPS, I might consider putting a DPS trinket on, uh, just for an extra breakout as well. Because you just you want to break out as fast as possible and just roll back out of range, just so you don't get the uh, the damage over time put on you. Uh, so that's that's all you got to do. Just keep a cleanse ready for that. Um, yeah, in terms of that, uh, when he does suck someone into his mouth, uh, there's going to be like a 
You see these ballistas on the side. It's going to be a cog that comes up, and um, you're going to have to. You see myself do it the cog just because I guess no one else was aware of it. Or it was the first time running raid, I'm not sure, but I knew the cog existed, so that's why I ran over it. All you do is you shoot power one into his mouth, and that uh, frees the player from his jaws. Uh, that's all you have to do. Um, trying to think else. So yeah, uh, when CBs disappear, his ads will come up. The ads are just going to be in like sets of three. You fight some brine warriors, you fight some other ads. Uh, really no danger of dying. It's just like a. I wouldn't even say it's a DPS check, it's just there, just to prolong the fight. In terms of Sea Beast, um, don't go all crazy single target on him, because he, the way the damage scaling works on him, um, it's not so much that his defense is through the roof, it's just that your attacks are going to be very minimal. So it's like, if you're used to parse, like doing 20k a second on single target, you're going to be doing like 10k, uh, just away from the damage that's set up. Uh, he, he doesn't have that much health in comparison it, it's just weird how the fight goes but it um there's not like a whole whack of single target damage to be had in this fight even though it's it's purely single target it, the damage that you're doing is, is so reduced that it's not going to make like a, a huge difference as well so it's not like blow all your supercharges on single target here because you've got the next fight coming up so as this part here i'm not sure where, where the timestamp is but you'll see me go to the ballista and you just got to hit him with power one and then it frees the freeze the player that's all you yeah, and he just goes through his different phases, and that's it. Uh, so yeah, I see, I see this being possibly harder in elite. Like I see the the opportunity to make it difficult in elite, um, especially with the death counter. So we'll see how it plays out. I'll pick this up at the final boss. school has unearthed ancient magic more powerful than Poseidon himself magic that is mine to wield the darkness has chosen me anointed me as its avatar no longer will Atlantis cower below the surface or feed from the bottom today the lowest will become the highest today the depths will rise oh, Hold on! He's raising Atlantis to the surface! Atlantis will conquer the surface world, and I will rule as king. The people of Atlantis will never fight for you. You are right. Atlantis is not worthy. I deserve greater. I will use the relics of the Zodiac to channel the full power of the Abyssal Dark and create my own kingdom. Atlantis will perish, and the kingdom of wrath will reign eternal. Never! Cannot be! The trident of Poseidon? Destroyed! <laughs> and you 
and all of Atlantis will follow. Okay, so we pick ourselves up at the Column Wrath fight. Uh, this is the, the long part of the race. You see uh, in the timestamp of the video, uh, the entire rest of the video length is just this fight. Uh, it's a very long fight. Not sure how that's going to play out in the beat. Especially because it's a bit harder and have more health. We'll see how that plays out. But really from uh, a fight standpoint, there's a lot of stuff going on at once. And then there's not a lot of stuff going on at once, if that makes any sense. Like there's a lot of mechanics, but a lot of mechanics that you don't even have to worry about as a group. You just kind of yes through everything. Like yes, throughout the fight, there's going to have to be cogs that uh, the group, the players have to turn uh, and to, to progress through the fight. So it's, it's the group has to be aware of those uh, but throughout the fight you're going to see his defense boosted a lot uh, that's why it kind of adds to the length of the raid uh, and then at the end he's going to go invulnerable um, and then have to then progress through the cogs to actually get him to be able to be damaged uh, and then at the end not so much at the end but towards the end uh, a new type of monster is going to come out that blob monster from the alert I forget what it's called uh, blob bomb or something like that you have to kill him and he basically drops uh stone or drops a, an artifact then you have to pick up and carry it in rest through the, the artifacts on the edges so it's it's something that uh, when he comes out you have to focus damage on that you have to do that I think like three or four times like the exact amount uh, but that's the only way to progress through the fight uh, so if you're just killing ads you're just killing column wrath and not focusing on Blombus, uh then you're gonna pull on the fight even more um, besides that uh, let's see here um, Bargwar comes out. There's a feat for not letting him uh, enrage. Not enrage, but, you know, like uh, grow in size from absorbing the water. That's one of the feats here. Uh, in terms of Bargwar, he does do his attack where he randomly jumps out, uh, detaunts, and attacks the groups. So you still have to be mindful of that. It's like uh, SSE. Um, not sure. I th think possibly. He the aggro here for me. Maybe I didn't pick him up and that's why he attacked a few people. That could be why. Maybe I didn't reply to Tom. Maybe that was my fault. Uh, I know he launched it at one player, but I thought I hit him with uh, Inkscape the Storm. But I may have missed it. Just because of all the yeah, and stuff going on. So, um, maybe you'll rewind the footage, but possibly those two deaths were my fault. I'm not sure. Uh, but we'll see. But it's the same thing. You just, if you, you just have to block. It's the same thing as SSE. He doesn't do all his attacks. Like, he's not going to... I'm not sure if he's going to spawn a whirlpool if he absorbs the water. I don't think we've ever gotten to that point because uh, obviously his health is uh, a lot more reduced than it is compared to SSE. Uh, in terms of Column Wrath, not much you have to worry about in terms of like Skull Attack. It's more just kind of like dogpiling the ads. Um, the other thing I should mention, you've already seen it once, but basically there's going to be a red strafing uh, run uh, icon on the floor. Basically that's the sea beast going through the fight. Uh, you'll see a bunch of people die to it. I guess they're not, not obviously see the giant red ore like you just saw right there on the floor it's going to go through the entire group and, and push you back as well uh so just watch it it's not so much a one shot like it is to straight from running machine uh it's still a lot of damage it'll probably one shot an elite and it's a pushback as well because it's a very wide uh, open map we have here for the final fight so just be mindful of that if you see red ore just get out of your way besides that uh I, I get, i'm using dash attack in this fight is ice that's a super speed iconic supercharge. If you just haven't seen that icon, it's number six. Uh, it frees you from control effects and also is 100% damage absorption shield. The only trick is you have to be in movement mode to be able to use it. So if you see it grayed out of my bar, that's because I'm grounded or not in super speed. Uh, I use it here just because it's an extra shield. Because of Amazon Deflection, yes, it's uh, you know the best shield in the game, but you can get stunned out of it. So I don't like running it unless I know I'm not going to get stunned out because I don't want it to be end up being like a wasted power slot. So I ran the supercharge A. You'll see it come in handy a few times because uh, since Sea Beast pushes everyone back and spreads them out, uh, it's sometimes hard to get reses. So I like having dash attack because I can cover the full length of the room just with dash attack uh, and it being a great absorption shield as well. So I can dash, get the res back out if, if the group's not paying attention. But yeah, in terms of mechanics, that's really it. Just the artifacts on the side, and then you're, as a tank perspective, all you're doing is just holding aggro. Nothing you have to do special as a tank. It's more just on the group to, to finish off the artifacts. Um, you could technically say this fight's... It's not designed for two tanks, but like the Crown of Thorns, just because there's so many adds and the boss and stuff, it would make things a little bit faster. Like, as you saw here, everyone just dies from the CB straight from around, which is stupid in my mind. 
messages. And then I dash attacked across the entire room, got the res, at least on one of them. And uh, I had the shield for the res as well. I think we lost one person there, so I'm not sure if that was that DPS. I don't know. Maybe that's uh, why the fight got a little bit longer as well. But the same thing, completely preventable deaths, that's for sure. Uh, even having a shield for when you see this Draven might come out, if you or whatever. But yeah, in terms of a tank, really, you're, all you're doing is holding aggro. Uh, these adds are going to spawn from the artifacts periodically, so you just have to make sure to be in position to pull them. That's why I like keeping everything in the center. Uh, in terms of that... Oh yeah, I was going to say, the, the fight gets a little bit easier, I'm assuming, with two tanks, just because you could separate Blombas, you could separate Column Wrath from the adds, just to make it uh, less damage splitting. Um, so it's not like the fight is designed for two tanks, you can easily solo tank this. Um, it's just that probably would speed it up slightly if it was with two tanks, just for to minimize the damage splitting. Yeah, that's about it, guys. Uh, like I said, it's not so... Like, the raid The raid's really neat and interesting. It's just underwhelming from a difficulty standpoint. I, I don't know if the, it, because of the, the pushback we had during Hive and Machine Elite and their difficulty. I'm not sure if the community pushback from that was we kind of backtracked and back to easier raids. Uh, like I said, the Elite could be still harder. But at the same time, Hive and Machine regular were still somewhat hard. It was still like an engaging raid. You still a chance to die. Uh, I just don't see that... And I guess you have changes here, but it's just so obvious that uh, you can avoid these attacks. It's really, you shouldn't be dying at all. But like I said, we'll see how this DLC plays out. I hope that I can get some Elite footage for you to, to show you that or what it looks like or what the differences are, like what changes on Elite. Um, it's concerning to me that the DLC comes out in four days and no one's done Elite yet. Um, but that's just a combination of not having the caliber of players on test and test just being generally dead. So I guess, I guess we'll see how this all turns out. But uh, like I said, they, both raids are interesting. They're they're fun for some players. Uh, they look beautiful. Uh, just underwhelming from that difficulty standpoint, like what I look for and what other end game players look for. Any questions and comments about the video or about the DLC, like I said, put them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. I don't have a planned video to come out after this for the DLC, unless I get some elite footage. Um, and then... You'll have this in four days anyway, so, uh, or this Thursday or Friday, probably after the downtime. Uh, but yeah, if there's some you like me to cover, let you know, just let me know in the comments. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Oh, okay.
dark gods of the sea and beyond. I invoke thee. Give me the power I crave. Decide you give me strength. So ends the reign of the Mad King Forum Wrath. Let us pray that the dark magic he unleashed will be driven from this world for good. Oh.